Holy heck, welcome to Souls and Any Goods, Star Wars Rogue One movie podcast. We're talking about Rogue One today. Everything, spoilers. You know, if you haven't seen the movie at this point, you probably should check out because we're going to talk about everything from spoilers to Darth Vader appearing to people getting killed. It's all in here right now. Let's check it out. So, you know, we saw Rogue One on the weekend. We saw it at the midnight screening, all of us. We were hosting event cinemas, George Street's midnight screening, which was pretty cool. First time for all of us. Um, except you missed the start, right? Except we missed the start. What the hell was with that? We yeah. got told there was 27 minutes worth of commercials and ad breaks and stuff like that. They ended up being five. It was a Passengers yeah. trailer and a that never Garnies the Galaxy. Never is, a, is a pre-show less than 10 oh, minutes. I thought I was they devastated. would have stacked that full of shit before. I was devastated. Garnies. I made a 10-second countdown. Apparently which it went got a well. Good reception, yeah. Didn't see it myself. Mm. Oh, so everyone started tear. to get pumped. Yeah. And I'm going, they're not here. They're not back. Yet. Yeah. You a little know? text, the movie's starting. Yeah. Shit. So you run with all my balls. Is that the only time right. you've seen it or have you seen it a second time? No, I was meant to go yesterday, but we had a bit of a hiccup in the day. So I might go tomorrow. So I might, missed, go, might go Wednesday. You would have missed the blue milk. The blue milk? The blue milk. That's where mean? the blue milk, you know, there's a few Easter eggs. I did, I did hear about the blue milk. There's I blue milk in the I very first scene. Everyone's talking about blue milk. Yeah. So you've seen it twice, Mick. Yes. So yeah. I think Ryan and I have both seen it once. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you're fresh. You're you're. Yeah. So I, what did we think? What did we think? You talk, I loved you talk it first. Yeah, man. I absolutely Captain loved it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been been back a second time already, um, but I'm I know I'll go a few more times as well. Yeah. Uh, this is something that I was anticipating, probably more than Force Awakens because I kind of it was just something going to be totally new. Didn't really know what to expect. There was a lot of, for, I think for older fans, mm -hmm. like, and I feel like this film was sort of made for us as well, but the anticipation of going back to that era of the very first movie. So all the vehicles and new characters, but the time period and all that kind of stuff was going to tie in very closely. So it was one of those situations where I was just trying to keep my expectations very low. Yeah. And, and, and it was hard to do because the trailers looked awesome. So going into it, I did manage to, you know, we've been burnt a few times with Star Wars stuff in the past and it wasn't quite as good as I thought. But so going into this, it was really with open eyes. And then by the end of it, I, it was just such a satisfying experience. I yeah. felt like it was just, I probably hadn't felt that way since I probably saw Return of the Jedi. Yeah. You know, coming out of a new Star Wars film, not knowing what to expect going in. More, you know, The Force Awakens, I kind of felt like I, I kind of knew so much about that film but by the time it hit. Loved it as well, but I just feel like this one I had this awesome sense of, you know, satisfaction by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. It was very, yeah, very fun. I have to say that um, it wasn't, like, when I first walked in, I was angry because I missed the first two <coughs> minutes or whatever I missed. I knew I missed something, and I definitely missed you the... You definitely didn't miss the, the crawl. The, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 um, it didn't happen. <laughs> that's, right. that's true, that's true. What did you, do you think it needed a crawl? Uh, no, I, don't, I think it's good that they're trying to be different with this. The only thing, I, I, I do think they they probably could have had at least the word Star Wars in there somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, think, I think for me, sorry to talk over you, but I think for me, th it felt weird to not have it because like um, Scott on the site made a really good point to me one time that he said that everything that we've ever done Star Wars wide, everything we've ever played, everything we've ever seen has always had a crawl, even if it was like the crappiest video game from like the early 90s, 80s, even 70s yeah, in some cases, they mm. always had the title crawl. It would always open up with Star Wars and then... You know, and then go down to a planner and that would introduce it to the game no matter what it was it would yeah. always have it yeah. so to have something from a franchise um, from this franchise sorry to not have the opening crawl it felt fan film for me like and especially with the but that's what it is opening like for me it's like the ultimate fan film like yeah, 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 the most yeah, expensive yeah. That's, fan that's film ever made that's but true I think they're probably like personally I, I actually I like that it wasn't there but I know a lot of people are reacting to that specific thing so I think I wouldn't be surprised if the next one they put it back in or they, they do something because... Yeah, I, you know, I really missed it. I really wanted it because there's a sense that, it, like you said, all the video games, all the movies, even comics and stuff have yeah. it. Yeah, like even, everything. even the Star Wars comics, the, you know, the Marvel comics, they even had it. Like Yeah, um, everything. It's a double so page. synonymous with it. Yeah. And some of the reasoning coming out about it, well, it's because they want it to be standalone and they want it to be this whole fresh... It's got Darth Vader in it, yeah. and it almost overlaps with the first. <laughs> it's not that separate. Yeah, no, it's you know not. what I mean. The it whole is thing's so about the Death Star in. that is, um, is all about episode. And four. And I feel like once that fanfare goes, the the logo comes on, and the crawl starts. Like there's this anticipation that builds, and just you you get a little bit of backstory and excitement about what this film's going to hold, and then 
you just settle into this new world. And I, yeah. it's just a thing that's so synonymous with those movies that I really enjoy. And I felt if I, I missed it, you know. And there was the, I mean, as I said, I missed it, but I'm now 99.99% sure <coughs> that there was the long time ago on a galaxy far, far yeah. away. Yes. And then it yep. just yep. went into the movie, which is weird. Like, why even have that? If you're not going to have the crawl, I feel like ditch off that too. Yeah. Because if you're going for the next bit of text that appears after that, it's just Rogue One. So a long time but ago, it wasn't. Galaxy far, far away. It was. Rogue One. Yeah. No, unless it had to have two titles because it no, it didn't. It no, went, no, no, we'll, no. Like five minutes later. The, oh, right. After yeah, yeah. the prologue, which happens. I hated, it yeah. looked yeah. like it was made in word art. That but title it, it didn't even have a yeah. Star Wars story around the outside. No, like no, it was just does. like an ugly Rogue One they made in two seconds. It's like they maybe thought about going with the opening crawl, but then they're like, "No, nah, fuck, we fucked it. No, don't do that. Don't do the backup yeah. and put something in. Put something in, <laughs> mate. I've got word art. <laughs> just put <laughs> it in." And then that's what they did. And it's like really felt weird. I kind of got over that. I forgot about the crawl thing like because i love that that opening scene so much i was like into the movie already so mm -hmm. i didn't really have time to think about it i was just like oh this is happening this, mm. is, this is yeah the yeah call's, the call's yeah. not going to be a thing and i'm already over it but yeah i agree with you about the font thing because yeah. it was a bit strange that was yeah it was awful it was awful and at, at this point of the movie i was in such an anger that i missed the first two minutes of the movie which is really stupid but we saw it in a midnight screen. It was such anticipation for it. And I missed the first two minutes from someone telling me that it was meant to be 27 it's minutes too long. too busy buying your overpriced popcorn. I was. I was. That's what I was doing. I was buying overpriced off. popcorn and overpriced frozen Coke. Yeah. But I had to have it because it was midnight. I was going to fall asleep if I didn't. Anyway, point being, um, you know, it felt weird. And then they're having this ugly title card that for, for the movie, for Rogue One. It just felt like mm. you spent $200 million on this movie. At least add 3D to it or something. Like... <laughs> Like, I don't even think the stars were moving behind it. Like, no, I don't that, think there was they any were on kind different of... planes as well. It was like, the for, I'm going to have to watch it again, but it was like that text was on a on a clear PNG yeah. layer with a few stars on it and it was yeah, shrinking. So some stars. stars were going at different pace to the yeah. distant. It was yeah, weird. It, was it just awful. felt weird. Um, <laughs> but I know that's really stupid, but like my point of that story is that because of that, I hate, I was like, I was angered in this scene and I was just like, this is crap. This isn't Star Wars. I don't, I'm not into it. But then... Tarkin came in and the second Tarkin came in I was like fuck that's the most amazing CGI I've ever seen in my life because just the first shot of him the first shot of him when he walked in he started talking to Krennic <coughs> it was flawless but then how far in was that though that was that was, that was 15 a 20 minutes into so it so you, you were hating I, I was hating, hating I was like I was like this is shit I don't want to be a part of this just because, to see them all because, of because of those reasons that it there's took no me, title I missed the first two minutes and that shitty ugly it took me a good to 10 to 15 to get to settle into the new style the lack of crawl, not familiar music, not familiar characters, different shooting style. Yeah. Still liked it all, still appreciate it, still great. But it just took that until about then before I started to settle into it. And really, I think by the time we were on the ground in Jeddah mm. and it was kind of like that Moss Eisley thing and you're seeing a few people like yeah. dodgy characters. I thought, okay, now it's starting to feel a bit yeah. more like... Jeddah was pretty cool. Yeah. They had some cool yeah. stuff in there, but it was very much just a rehash of Moss Eisley almost. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they move around quite quickly in that early part of the film like there's a little bit of planet hopping mm, kind yeah. of similar thing happened in force awakens but we 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 at least we had that opening scene on, in force awakens where it was when you know kylo ren comes down to the planet and you got oscar isaac and the droid mm. immediately you kind of know you kind of know where the story is going to go after that mm. then there's a bit of planet hopping but i think you know because it's the same story as episode four but let's not talk about <laughs> yeah. that yeah and but that's the, that's actually the main reason i like this film is because it does tell a new story with new characters yeah. and mm. there's scenes in this that we haven't seen before mm -hmm. in yeah. the Star Wars film and you don't feel like um, they're in no way playing it safe with that like there's obviously easter eggs all through it but yeah. I like these new characters for yeah. the most part and I actually felt <coughs> for them like as the movie went on I know not everyone is digging like the character like every single character in the group but I think they all had well balanced like arcs, and they all had kind of each of them had kind of their moment mm. yeah. in the film. Yeah, I have read a lot that um, there wasn't very much character development. Like Jin also had hers, and then everybody else in the film got either a line of character development or they just didn't get anything. I didn't feel that way yeah. when I first like when I watched it. I felt like I got enough from everyone. Like well, I, I understood every what everyone's motivation was and what um, you yeah. know what they were trying yeah. to do in the movie. The so for me, it. There's a lot of main players fine. and you've only got so much time to get to know them a bit. Yeah, exactly. And you had to get to know them fast and they did certain things like which I really liked and it would be considered risky and I wouldn't have thought I'd see it in a Star Wars film which is when uh, Cassian 
shoots a guy in the back to sort of shut him yeah. up. To, and I'm like, oh, okay. The rebels are a bit evil. This, is, this was really good. And that led into other parts of it that I, we hadn't seen the rebels painted in that kind of almost like a band of mercenaries. Like mm. they've got a common hate for the empire, but yeah. they're all, there's a bit of infighting. There's a bit of their own sort of yeah. self-serving stuff going on, which we hadn't really seen before. And I thought that that gave us a bit of backstory into pa- that character yeah. as well as the the rebels as a whole. Yeah. Well, I think the rebels, I think this is the first time we've seen the rebels almost show being shown as um, a disjointed team. Like then everyone yeah. else has their interests in why they want to be part of the rebellion but they don't actually have a... Um, obviously, the hatred for the Empire is their conjoined interest. But what I mean is like they don't... They all have their own separate interest to be a part of the rebel... To be a part of the rebel, sorry. And, um, you know, in the end, that conflict kind of ends being the reason why Jin also and that doesn't... The rebels team don't actually go to the Death Star. Mm. Um, but then they do. But you know what I mean? Like they have that scene where they're all kind of conflicting against each other or like, I don't want to be a part of this. That's kind of, the, I feel like, the first time we've seen the rebels be like that. Because every other time I've seen them in the later movies, they've all been this one entity, kind yeah. of like the Empire. Yeah, yeah. The good is and the bad is really very clearly defined. <laughs> really long, extensive. But moral <laughs> shades of grey is, is kind of like, you know, it's good to see that in the in the Rebels. And, and, yeah, and, sorry, go on. Oh, yeah, and what's, what's, that, what's that line that, um, that Jin, it's like a sick burn that she has. She's like, you know better than a stormtrooper or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like that yeah. happens oh, like yeah, yeah. when they have their little, yeah. their little um, fight and then just just like forgive each other like 10 seconds later. Yeah. Um, the yeah, the other like character that. intros in this too that like I thought uh, Krennic Ben Mendelsohn's character was a really interesting way to introduce him and just straight away he was different to any of the other villains mm-hmm. because of the tone. Uh, he used sarcasm and stuff like when, oh, he's Lyra back from the dead. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like a line from <laughs> Lockstock or <laughs> Chopper or something, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like where he's kind of like, you know, you could tell he didn't believe him at the start. He's like, all right, she's yeah. passed away. But then when she shows up, the, the level of sarcasm and like that he rubbed it in was kind of like yeah, almost yeah, yeah. A, a gotcha on yeah. him. And I thought that was a quite a interesting trait that I hadn't seen in a Imperial baddie. Yeah, I really liked his, um, the conflict he had between Tarkin and him too. Yeah. I, like I would have liked to have seen more of that. I know it's in the, apparently in the book Catalyst, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I don't read balls, books and uh, I'm lazy. Lot. Um, it was, I thought that was pretty interesting. It was, yeah, I thought so too because he was he, he is our lead villain in this movie, and then to see the kind of the little power struggles that he's yeah. got going on, it was almost like you. Sometimes you felt bad for him. It's <laughs> yeah. like, and what a, you know, he's a mega prick, but then Tarkin takes it to a whole other level. Yeah, like yeah, just, yeah. Fucking nukes him from <laughs> orbit with his own. Yeah, that's you know, right. He's that's like, right. I'll take it from here. <laughs> yeah. And and, he, and the, the the laser knocked him off before. <laughs> Did you notice that? No, but I didn't. When, no. So so Krennic's looking up at the Death Star as, as Tarkin's about. You you may fire when ready. Yeah. Like and then the the green lasers go as it shoots down to Scarif. Yeah. It blo- it hits the um, satellite tower that, that Krennic's sitting on. Right. Still. So it takes him out first. <laughs> pin pinpoint accuracy. <laughs> then it hits its nuclear explosion ten k's further down. It actually blo- blitz through the the, the satellite. Guy, the guy can't get a break, can he? <laughs> and he gets shot and shot in the back, right? As well. And then, and then he, and then she's gonna go back and, and do him again, and then Cassie yeah, kind of yeah. comes back. Yeah, and he, co- he copped a, a, a graze from uh, Lyra as well at the start. She got one on him. Yeah, she did. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Yeah, but I, th- I do feel like he's he as as I mean, if we're just talking about Krennic for a moment, like I think he he has some good moments in the film, and I love Ben Mendelsohn, but mm. the Aussie accent it, it can shine him. through a little bit, comes through a little bit, and it it's does particularly come through a lot in that more. scene with Darth Vader. Um, which you shouldn't really be thinking in that moment. Oh, shit, there's an Aussie talk. <laughs> James I L- think that's James L. Jones. I, I haven't heard anyone else mention it. It does get to me like, I love him as an actor. Like, yeah. I think he's so fucking great and it was really good seeing him in it. I, I'm just sensitive to hearing the Aussie accent because traditionally we don't hear it in these kind of movies. Mm. And so it, it, for us it might seem a little bit out of place. You just but hear ca- a crap, crappy Kiwi accent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or it's also Sorry like sometimes... The Kiwis are there. It's, you know, it's, it's not you, it's it's tomorrow Morrison. Yeah, just, well, but also South Africans, right. Aussies and Kiwis have this kind of, there's a there's a little similar accent to that Southern Hemisphere English that it, it I really notice it when it's in a film. Mm. Like, you know, if I'm watching um, Chappie or um, yeah, District yeah, 9 yeah. or something, it really stands out to me. But other people, like, don't seem to notice it or talk about it. We're very conscious of our accents yeah, yeah, yeah. down here. And not, I haven't met, heard anyone mention anything about him sounding Aussie in it, except... A couple so of Aussies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with. Yeah, 
Mm. What do you think about the score? I mean, Michael Giacchino only had four weeks to apparently produce the score after Kevin Desplat, I think <coughs> your name is, uh, got, yeah, got yeah. left the movie to, due to conflict of, not conflict, what was the reason? Well, so I think about that. It was scheduling, timing. No, it was it scheduling it conflicts. came yeah, down yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah scheduling conflicts. But I think sorry, sorry. He, Cacino is like the go-to guy, I think, for scores now. And he, he is considered to be the successor to, to John Williams. I think that's been pretty obvious. But Would you go that far? Has he had? Well, like, no, can you think of a theme that he's come up with? That you're like, yes, that's... I mean, like, the only oh, one right. I can think of is the you Incredible mean that matches, theme. That oh, matches Super 8. Williams. He did some great stuff in Super 8. But like... But like stuff you're going to listen to later, like I, e- I bought that soundtrack. Yeah, I really, really, I really dug it. Yeah, okay. I, I think, think it's I've because it's that that, much, much. that partnership that him and JJ Abrams have, and yeah. JJ Abrams has He's considered the new yeah, Spielberg, like, so it makes kind of and sense. And Super Eight is so obviously Spielbergian, like yeah. But um, yeah, I don't. I think this one might take a few more viewings to fully appreciate yeah. the score that he he does here. Like my first viewing, I don't know about you, Mick, but. I didn't really pick up on any themes that stuck in my head after yeah. I saw it. No, no. Um, I was, I was, I felt a little bit let down by the music the first screening. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, there were a few good moments here and there. There's a, te- there's a, like a textbook Cacino moment towards the end of the film when all the shit's going down. Basically, when they're all dying, and it's it, they kind of all the sound effects and dialogue's gone, and it's just his music takes over. It's like exactly the same as that opening scene from the first Star Trek where. Um, uh, what's James Kirk's dad's name? He's going. Chris Hemsworth is going down in a ball of flames um, oh, during the yeah, prologue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and Tiberius? then his score just kicks in. It, or it, it's they did it in Lost, like almost every episode in Lost as well. Yeah, and that was the first time I'm, I felt like that was a Gacino moment. Mm. So maybe if he had the confidence to go out a bit more and actually give us like a like a theme that's he could make his own. But yeah. even the little Star Wars moments. He was always like pulling it back just yeah. to touch. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. kind of like that thing where you don't want to be sued for copyright, so you do <laughs> five of the seven notes are the same, That's and the right. last two it goes. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah, 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 um, feel, yeah. But there was some moments where it, it it did when it when that familiar music came in. It's there. It's three or four times I think in the movie, like when Vader was around, sort of the Imperial March mm-hmm. music or his theme would come on. Um, I noticed the second time. I noticed more of like straight up bits of Star Wars music that were in it that I didn't notice the first time, probably because I was focusing on the visuals. Yeah. Um, and Leia's theme comes into it. Um, not at the end either. I'm sure it's somewhere else. Imperial, but, Imperial March. Yeah. Would come in. There was a couple of moments like, yeah, I think I thought there was about three or four in it. But yeah, I didn't feel like the score was anything. I felt that that's, that has let it down. I mean, there was so much to love about this film. like, But the score, yeah, I felt like... It's, it's a bit of a letdown. But okay. having four weeks to do it as well, it's like, well, I can probably see why. Yep. But then I was talking to you about this. It's like these are films that are going to be put up on a pedestal for the next 30 years. Yeah. Just get it right. You know, Don't rush it out in four weeks. Don't give the guy mm-hmm. only four weeks. Get him on earlier or you can't really delay the movie, but I don't know what has to happen, but get it to that level because to sort of rush, if it was rushed out in four weeks, which is just seems crazy for mm. something that's got so much writing on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but se- like I said, second viewing, I actually appreciated the music a lot more. So same happened to me with Force Awakens. I was okay. expecting much more, you know, yeah. big scores like we're used to from John Williams and I felt like Force Awakens, it was, it was a little more subtle. But after v- viewing it more and more, I love it. I love awesome. it now. Yeah, I think with Force Awakens, that score was considered a little bit of a disappointment for, for some fans. But even the first time I saw it, the Ray theme like really oh, yeah. stood Stand out to out. me. Yeah, love um, I love the um, <coughs> the Rebel, or not sorry, the re- um, Resistance theme when they started coming down in the X wings. Yeah, uh, that I thought that was an awesome too. theme. Um, but this this, stuck out for me. this movie was like wall to wall score score. So it's crazy <laughs> to me that he did churn it out. Like even that is an achievement in itself that he was able to write so much score because there's not much of the film where you're not hearing music at some mm. at some point. Yeah, um, we've talked a lot about a fair amount of negative. I feel like what was your favorite yeah, part of the movie? Like, I mean, I love the movie. I think we I all love the movie. Oh, yeah, there's no, been a lot of negativity like, right know, now. Yeah, this, this is this pretty is normal. This is pretty normal to nitpick my, things. Yeah, when, yeah even let's, when let's you stop love nitpicking. Them. What did you love? <laughs> Should have probably led off with that. Now it's like, oh, I really love yeah. the movie, but this Back sucked. That, and none of that really sucked that bad. Like this is still like nine out of ten for me. I, I absolutely loved the yeah. film. What stood out for me, um, the whole third act was just had me like every. It was just I could not get sick of it. It was paced so well. 
the battle, the way that they structured the editing and the the, the whole way they presented the battle, of what was going on down on, on the ground, what was going on in space mm-hmm. and what was going on in the data tape room. I thought that was just put together so well that it just kept it kept it flowing. The visuals of that were amazing. Like yep. I think it, what, it, it really could have gone down that Michael Bay Transformers thing with just shit, fl- lasers yeah, 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 and ships definitely. everywhere. Definitely. It was almost like you had your, your blue squadron, your yellow squadron, or gold squadron and your red squadron, and you kind of could see what they were up to. Like, yep. you know, the, the, the Y wings are going to do the bombing run on the thing, and the blue guys are down here doing that. And it kind of it was almost contained. There was a lot of stuff going on, but you kind of even recognised some of the characters. You know, do you feel a bit stupid when the red team was like, you know what, the, the bombers are going to take the actual the the ship. Fuck it, we're going to shoot the actual shield because that's going to work. <laughs> like they started shooting that shield. I was like, what the? Get out of here! You're not doing yeah, anything. That's just going to do something off. else. Yeah. Um, I was actually but, surprised. I didn't. I'm glad that we got all that dogfight stuff because I actually didn't. Even though it was a little bit of it in the trailer, I didn't think it'd feature much in the actual film. Yeah. Mm. But you do end up with that, you know, what three different three the battles going on in three different places. Yeah. yeah which Jedi kind of set that template for how yeah how these things should go, but that that's like action on a scale that we've never seen in a Star Wars movie. Right? Yeah. Was, well, the thing the thing for me I really enjoyed about that scene, which is. I think something that the people have been complaining about, but for me, I must be the people they're selling that shit for, but bringing back the nostalgia, bringing back the old characters and those scenes where they were, you know, they're, um, they'd taken the scenes from episode four and reinstalled, uh, reinstalled, brought them back and put them in these movies. Mm. Um, like the red four leader and, uh, was it red four leader? Uh, red name. leader and red gold leader. leader. Yeah. Red yeah. leader and gold leader. Um, you know, bringing them back just for the little sequences was like, holy shit, that's mad. Cause it's going to sit up well with yeah. episode four. And then, Bring back Tarkin, and then you know, putting Leia at the end of the movie, Kill, and killing then, Red Five, um, yeah, killing Red Five, opening up that slot. Oh for yeah, Luke. yeah, yeah, but that, that was, was really amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And yeah. then seeing, um, you know, that little bit, oh, well, not little bit, sorry, the the you know, the talks about um, uh, what's his, what's Jin Orso's dad's name, Galen, so, Galen also leaving the the you know the main plot point of the episode four being the you know the gaping hole in the Death Star to blow it up. Yeah. Doing that made episode four make more sense. Yeah, and I was just, just kind of like I that. I feel like everyone in the audience at that awesome. point just goes, ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That that massive plot hole that yeah. everyone's talked about. Yeah. Why was it so easy? Just yeah. this one bullet and yeah. Yeah. Plot blow hole. up. Yeah. And that and just brought all that together. Kind of still kind of left the other plot point out where it was like, I mean, they're in a planet that can <coughs> shoot planets. Why don't they just blow up the moon of Yavin and then directly shoot Yavin 4? At the end of episode four, kind of thing. Like I don't know if you've seen the how to, how, yeah. they, how yeah, it should have yeah. ended. That's bad um, money. Apparently, if the reason apparently that is, it's is the sh- the um, Death Star can't shoot again within twenty four hours. But oh. it's never been really talked about right. in the movies. Well, that's convenient. I think it was a that's couple a good of books. Get out of jail. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, like that kind of shit for me. That that was my favorite kind of part, which is weird because. No, I love that. Like and even, really like, like this that is really nerdy, but even down to the stuff that I remember distinctly from episode four, when those guys are communicating in their X-Wings and they're like, I'm going to go for an attack run. The way they edited those scenes, you'd hear half a sentence in the cockpit and the other half on the radio. Mm-hmm. They even did that in this and they would cut them off at those like, you'd go, you know, you'd hear it nice and clear, like it's goal leader, we're starting our attack and then run would be on the radio in another guy's yeah, yeah. one or out of the cockpit. I love yeah. that. The little touches like that that just help you ping pong around the action and keep it flowing and the yeah, sound be, of it, you know. It'd be great to, when I watch it again, I'm going to watch really closely those edit points because I like it would not have been an easy to edit that last act of the film. Yeah. Like I'm sure they went through so many iterations and obviously like, uh, you know, they reshot quite a large chunk of the, of the film and we're, we're suspecting, we're guessing that it was mostly that third act stuff. Yeah. Well, you can tell by the trailer. I think I think a lot more than even the third act was yeah. was changed. Yeah. I mean, the ending was definitely changed. I mean, you had Jin also running around on the on the on the sand with the the, the, the data, data tapes, and yeah. and obviously in the movie she doesn't do that. She gets killed on the beach, but you know, I mean, the whole sequence before yeah. that in the satellite um, is different. And then um, a lot of the stuff where Krennic's talking talking to Vader is different angles and different shots for that. So, well, yeah. I mean, maybe I rewatched ben Wilson, um, actually had a you know, English voice back in the original version of it and lost it. And yeah, I yeah, yeah. Possibly. <laughs> it's happened. I rewatched the, the first two trailers mm. and seriously, that f- the first full length trailer that we got, 85% of it is not in the film. Yeah. yeah the yeah, lines, yeah. the shots, just so much of it. And I, I really feel like that's a bit of an eye opener. I mean, 
maybe the that film was good as well, but just different. Yeah. Because I mean, the quality of it looks the same. Yeah, but yeah. The story obviously has changed so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't. Re- I, when I came out, we said I, I noticed that there's so a lot I thought was in there, but I didn't realize just how much until I rewatched the trailer now, and see you know how different the lines are and. Different bits where, like, you know, even Cassian and Jin, uh, she's up in front where K2SO rides in, mm-hmm. the, in the front and they're talking about heading off somewhere. That wasn't in it. Yeah. She never sat up in the cockpit. No, that's right. So she's always hiding in the back. Yeah, whole... Um, it's that thing of, like, is it a deleted scene or is it just something they completely erased anyway? Mm-hmm. Like, I know. think it's... That there were, to be honest, with that much that's in the trailers that's not in the film, I think it's total plot change. Yep. I don't think it's just cut scenes mm. because... Because you are almost... in the, Today, we, we <coughs> watch trailers a lot more than we use. Like, we're able to watch them as many times we as we want on YouTube. Them. So it's like, you're almost... When you're watching a film now, you're just waiting for the shots. You're waiting for the lines of dialogue. Yeah. And in this case, it, they weren't happening. No. <laughs> but I kind, of, so. I kind of actually loved that it didn't because I feel like even though I'd seen three trailers, none of it was... None of the movie yeah, was ruined yeah, for me, yeah, which was awesome, which is kind of like what Force Awakens did. But they yeah. did it on purpose. This movie kind of did it accidentally, yeah. which kind of worked for it for me. So it kind of works like a, um, a Judd Apatow movie where, you know, obviously different takes in the trailer and then in the movie, this different joke. Um, I kind of wish that would happen in trailers. Like, well, shoot extra scenes. Yeah, that's a lot don't of work. Ruin, don't yeah. ruin just the yeah. trailer. 40% of the movie again. Well, yeah. it's not enough, but just like shoot extra shit. Like, yeah. so many movies these days are ruined by the trailers. Like, Terminator Genesis is the biggest cold I mean, I know that movie was shit, but the the main plot point of that film being John Connor being a Terminator was revealed in the trailer. But had they waited, that would have been amazing. Yeah. Mm. So like, I mean, in this thing, if they had waited to show Vader, that might've been amazing too, but they left it for not showing Moff Tarkin, which I thought was great too. Cause I had no idea he was being in that he movie. He probably wasn't finished in time for the trailer. Well, yeah, he, yeah, was, he right. was actually in a trailer. Um, him walking into Krennic on the Death Star. There is a shot of him from, from behind, behind. Yeah. That's um, right. yeah, which yeah. I didn't notice until obviously after I didn't question it. And you know, I know a lot of people were saying maybe the Emperor was in it, but then it ends up, ends up being that that's guy. That's right, you were hoodwinked with that too because yeah. he's just a random character. Yeah, well, so that's what I mean. Like, the... they could do this shit. Like, they could shoot extra shit that wouldn't matter, but it would keep people guessing. Like, you know, it'd get the talking going and they don't actually have to physically show these things happening, but they're, they're talking about it and they're changing the ideas to get people chatting about different things could turn mm. it on its head. That's yeah. all I mean. Um, but yeah, my favorite scene from the whole thing, I know I talked briefly about the... Um, the little you know, added extras of the uh, nostalgia shit, but it's Vader going butt crazy at the end of that end of that you know the ten minute sequence or five minute sequence where he pulls out his saber against the Rebel Alliance that are on the they're not they're not on the they're not on the on the tenty four the tenty four not tenty yet four? Tenty, how's that you say tentive I think tentive tenty four whatever they're not on that yet it's just on the other ship they're getting across to it but it's you know pitch black dark and then you just see this little oh so you hear his voice like and then the lightsaber ignite. And you're just like, holy shit, shit's about to go down. Mm-hmm. We've never seen that with Vader kind of no, before. Like no. that was kind of the first time was mind-blowing. we'd seen this little beautiful bastard go almost like video game style. Like <laughs> it, it felt re- like... Has Darth Vader ever been referred to as this beautiful bastard? I don't think well, so. Well, this that's little helmet's a little yeah. beautiful bastard. Hashtag stuff, beautiful you know. bastard. Let me just like do this. Yeah. Um, sorry. But... <laughs> My homie. Um, yeah, sorry. Um yeah, I don't think we'd ever seen that because it was very... I, I felt like it was very video game-ish, like Force, um, Force Unleashed kind of style where you know, he's lifting up people, crushing people's throats, stabbing through the chest with other people. And then that selfish guy that's trying to get away for that, like such a long period, like, open up the door, open up the door. I was like, just pass yeah, just the like, fucking things along. Doing? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I didn't think he was going to get away with it, but then he did. And um, obviously he did because there's a next movie that's already been filmed. We've seen it seven, um, you know, from 1977. But... It yeah. was like it was like a really hyped up version of what we see in A New Hope, where he does walk in down the corridor, but yeah, all he does but, is kind of just stand there and take. But his he was lifting up like when he lifts up Antilles, Captain Antilles, he's got him by the throat. But in this film, he just lifts up people with the Force, which mm. like that's incredible. Like yeah. that shit was awesome. It's like was it's so like cool. something out of Force Unleashed. Like yeah, that's what yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, like I think um, yeah, I th- actually think that if you think about it too much, it's like. As if you're watching that and then watching In Your Hope, you'd be like, why is Darth Vader like moving in slow motion yeah. like, compared to that? Yeah, well, he's got his stormtroopers. He doesn't need to. But they get away with it because yeah. it is such... It's a fa- it's a moment for the fans. Yeah, and yeah. And he kicks off. And it blew me away. As a, as a fan, me too. I was too. happily excited about that scene because I hadn't seen anything like it. That so was, was the like, icing on the cake. That was just... Didn't really... I mean, we knew we were going to see him but didn't realise it was going to be that cool. Yeah. It was amazing. It was short screen time but it was just... Yeah, yeah, perfect. I mean, that's one of the things that I was talking about being satisfied when I left. Like, 
that was something we'd never seen before. And, yeah. And it was so cool and it was so well done. You said it was video gamey and it was in terms of what he d- did, but I didn't think it, the way it moved, it, it all seemed still within within scope of what he's uh, capable mm. of, you know. Uh, it just was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't love what came after that. I just... The layer, la- layer, yeah, the layer I, moment? I could have done without, without seeing layer. I think it's... But, like, I don't know if it is, but I feel like it's because they haven't really got females... Like it sounds really sexist, but females' faces down in CGI because like <coughs> men tend to have a bit more like stubble and stuff like that, and women's faces are quite usually smooth and round shape and stuff like that. The plas- plastic look of CGI doesn't mm. really fold that well with females' right. faces. I feel like you can get away with a bit more with men because you can do pores, you can do dif- discoloration yeah. in the skin. It looked like they just taken some footage of her in the Star Wars Christmas special and just like. Well, they probably had. I well, mean, I thought that as a reference, maybe yeah. It was cool that she was in it. Yeah. I think if the shot maybe, the CGI was, I mean, it, it was obvious because we know how much time's passed and all that, but I think maybe if she was smaller in frame and a bit more a profile or mm. something, it, it just might have been more easier, you yeah. know, su- being, having a subtle CGI effect. See, I feel, I feel, I have to say it's the opposite, um, only because there's been so many movies where they do do close-ups of, of things and I, it either lets the CGI have more space to work, but... Closer up shots. So the Moff Tarkin scene when he first walked in, that was a full screen close up shot um, like this kind of thing, and it mm. was flawless. Mm. So I think because she was far away, I don't know the CGI didn't work for me. It felt well, she she was close though. I'm saying I think I think if she was if she was a bit further away, a bit smaller, and it wasn't a close up, maybe then you it's wouldn't mid, have seen. It was like a mid. It was like was it? yeah. When she says her line, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't when she says her line, it initially matter. see her from behind, and it would have been much worse if they just showed her from behind. Yeah, and you don't actually actually see her face at all. Yeah. That would have just been like, yeah, we, we obviously don't have Princess Leia here. We've got we, Princess We know Leia. how bad Leia looks. Let's not, let, I mean, Carrie Fisher looks, uh, let's, let's, let's leave that on. Let's, let's not go there. That's, all right. uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a whole, um, all right. another pod- podcast. Um, so, I mean, we all loved it. I did try and get someone on the podcast to talk about the film in a negative way, but it was very hard to find. So we, we all know we liked it. So I'm just double checking. All big yeses from us for this Massive film. yes. And Nine so out of ten. If you get a chance, definitely go see it in the cinema right now. Um, but what I wanted to talk about just lastly was where does Rogue One fit into the Star Wars franchise for you? Like where would you put it and how do you rank the films currently as they are? I'll go first if you'd like. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I would say, oh, I, oh, I just was thinking about it. Where would I put it in terms of like how much I liked it? Well, okay, if, if you're going to rank all the films, I mean, yeah, where, 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 where does it fit? What yeah, comes my first, what comes last? My favourite's Empire. Yep. Then Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Then I think... This and Jedi are kind of like, maybe Jedi just edges this out yep. and then Force Awakens. Then mm. episode three, two and one in that order. Okay. Yeah, I don't think anyone, I'm definitely with you on the, the three, two. I, I think everyone would say that the prequels. I just, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Return. I don't know what it is. Like I, as a kid, I loved Return. Return was at the top for me. But I don't know why. Maybe the Ewoks, I have no idea. Maybe it was the yeah. Rancor, like the cool, seeing the cool new things and I hadn't seen it as a kid. It was different. Um, and the epic space battle at the end of it, but now it's just it's a hard sit through. It's almost like, like I would put that just above episode three. Right. Uh, yeah. It's it's a hard sit through. It's like it's hard. Like that the Actually, second act for me in that film is just it's slow. Yeah. Nothing really happens, and then you've got the Ewok battle at the end of it, and the start you obviously got on Tatooine with Jabba and stuff like that. But the middle middle section of that film, like, like right now thinking about, it, I couldn't even tell you what happens. I mean, I know he goes to Dagobah, um, and then kind of. Where does it go? Come on, someone tell me. Well, I know that I know that they just cut Hans balls off in that movie, and it's just yeah. It's, it's well, like, I mean, yeah, they do the rebel stuff. I know what happens. Anyway, yeah, point yeah. being, that film for me slows down, and then yeah. yeah, I would say everything you write about episode, I would go um, starting off episode one being the worst, two, three, um, then I would go return, then I would go Force Awakens. Well, probably, you know what? Thinking about it, that's I, um, I put Force Awakens in there when I, uh, before Rogue One came out. That's where yeah. I would sit it now too, actually. Yeah, and then I yeah. would go Rogue One, uh, Empire, then Star Wars because I have to say, this, like, It'd be you can't have Star Wars without like you can't have Empire without Star Wars. And yeah, but and but yeah, if I'm gonna pick one to watch, I'm gonna pick Empire yeah. to watch, even though you're skipping. Like, but why? You know, but nothing. Like, like, I get it. I understand why you like it. Like, it's got a whole lot, a whole lot of dramatic tones and you learn that Luke's Darth Vader's kid or whatever. But like, what else is in the, in the movie that you really like? I know like the Hoth scene. Yeah. What else? 
I think it's got. I think Han Solo has got his best moments in that. Mm. In okay. that and Darth movie. Vader Han. too. There's a okay. lot of Darth Vader in it compared to Episode Four. Yeah. And and as a sequel, it was not just churning out the same shit. It was visually so different to yeah. Episode Four. We got totally different planets to work with, new vehicles, new music, brand new music mm-hmm. that was just taking it to everything went to a whole new level on it. Mm-hmm. And I think it just. The, the quality of everything, the visual effects. We had new characters like Yoda come in that are just amazing characters. Yeah. A um, lot more screen time for Darth Vader. And the fact that it's sort of ends on a downer, I think is kind of like a really good... I really liked that. Do we have anything like... I mean, I, I, I want to know this right now, but did the trailers originally reveal that Yoda was the Jedi, like the powerful Jedi? Or did that sequence kind of just like come off as a you know a Muppet being on the in the movie? Like you know I what I mean? Like, I couldn't remember. You saw you it mean, in the cinema. You yeah, but I don't. Shit. But trailers back <laughs> then, that's the you just saw reveal. posters. Like, yeah, for me, that's what Yoda a great looks sequence. Like, like yeah, that's yeah. an awesome sequence. I would have had no idea that Yoda was a Jedi, and finding out that he's a Jedi in the movie is just like this ultimate revel- yeah, I think revelation. That, that was a reveal for me when I watched it. I yeah. don't remember it yeah. seeing it in a trailer. I just okay. remember being surprised at that moment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, that was a genius idea, and then obviously turning uh, Darth Vader into Luke's father was yeah. flawless. Yeah. I but just, I don't think he had that in episode... I don't think he had that by episode four. I don't think he knew that idea. I don't know. That's right. my feeling. But I, yeah, I do I do think you've got to kind of let these things settle for... Like when you first see the film, you're always very excited about it. you just got to s- kind of sit back and see mm. how it ages as That's well. That's true. It's true. Because I think Force Awakens, things irritate me more the more I watch it. So yeah. it probably is... The order for that for me, Force Awakens is probably down a bit. Like Rogue One would be probably sitting third, like mm-hmm. you said. But then Force Awakens is probably almost like equal with Jedi, perhaps, because they both have their merits and they both have a few things that I would change about them. But So we've all put it top three out yeah, of eight have. Star Wars. So be, like, like I said, it'd be interesting to see what happens in a year from now when episode eight comes out, like whether it'll go further down mm. or whether it'll stay where it is. Or I agree yeah. with you on that point, though, because um, I'm, ash- I'm ashamed to say this, but I fucking loved episode one when that came out. I saw it nine times in the cinema. Nine yeah. times. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Ferris Bueller. Um, yeah, I saw it nine times in the cinema. I loved wow. it. Like, I thought it was the best one of the, all of them. And But then as I grew up, like, <laughs> as you know, because when that movie came out, I was 99, so I would have been 13, I think, at the time. So it's made for my demographic. Um, but as, as I grew up, I kind of, like, worked out what the hell's going with his trade, trade negotiations. Like, the fuck is Jar Jar? I hate Boss Nass. Like, I hate anything Gungans. You're just having an existential crisis. Like, oh, it just, everything just started, I had everything. these realizations. It's the same with Batman and Robin. Like, I loved that movie when I saw yeah, it as yeah, a kid. Yeah, but when yeah. I saw it for the second time, older, you know, a little bit older, I was like, this is horrible. This is the worst film of all time. But, uh, so I agree with, you know, as, a further go, as, it, as it goes on, as you age, yeah. that maybe the film won't be I, as I'm good. just concerned about the CG because it might seem cutting edge now, the Tarkin layer thing. But, you know, that's Leia doesn't feel cutting edge. Tarkin does. Yeah, so, yeah, the, yeah. And I'm only saying it's the first shot of Tarkin. Tarkin, when he, when he arrives on the Death Star and he sh- you show his face for the first time, it's that shot that is flawless. Every yeah. other sequence after that doesn't look like it has had as much money. It's almost like they were trying to sell it first and then just like leave the money as it goes, like right, lead yeah. down the, yeah. you know, the rabbit so hole. So I'm concerned how that's going to look in 30 years' time. George Lucas, we might have to chuck a George Lucas and fix that up when it's... Well, they probably will. As the technology <laughs> moves along. Have they... This, this offbeat question, fixing up something. When they re-released this, the... This is Toy Story I'm going to bring up. When they released Toy Story, did they fix that up? Because I feel like that movie looks much better than it did when I originally saw it. You probably just never saw it on, you know, rem- I saw it on Blu-ray. Cinema, like, well, I don't know. Anyway, that's a really stupid you would have seen question. It on a, but I was going to know if they, they're doing that kind of stuff. Projector. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so there we go. We've answered that pretty, Toy Story question for you. Yeah, thank you. It's a <laughs> lifelong ambition I needed to find out. Yeah. So pretty high. We're all ranking almost number three. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. At the moment, that's Us, pretty incredible. Yeah. Mm. It's a pretty high recommendation. Yeah. And I know mm. I actually I know that there's a lot of people out there that, that aren't such fans, especially devout Star Wars fans that mm. don't like that it departs so much from. Yeah, I, I read a. Um, so I think you're either on that. You're the you're either along for the ride or you're not. I read that. a review from Gizmodo. Um, Manda something she didn't like it because there was so much cgi used in the movie i think that she doesn't understand that practical effects were actually used in the movie and maybe she's getting lost in the cgi mm. that was used that the practical effects actually took her by surprise and maybe thinks that cg that's all cgi because one of the things that she said was the 
Mon Calamari people, are, uh, they're not Mon Calamari. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, they are. Mon Calamari people were CGI, but they're not. They're a practical yeah. effect yeah. makeup. Yeah. But, they, but she said, you know, you know, singled them out and said these CGI characters like the Mon Calamari people. I'm like, yeah, they're not. They're practical. So yeah. maybe I'm thinking like a lot of people are seeing... They were prosthetics. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like a lot of people are seeing these movies for what they think because they're used to seeing so yeah, much CGI. Yeah, I agree, totally, yeah. Used I've to heard seeing all these different like things. And then they actually are using practical effects that they're getting confused in their mind. Like their eyes are seeing something else, but that's actually not. Mm. I don't know. That's the... Interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think the downfalls of the movie for me were... I would have loved a little bit more on the soundtrack. Um, the opening credits, I would have loved to crawl. And I hated that title, title, um, the word art title um, card. That was horrible. Never want to see that again, but I will. Actually, that's many that's other more likely the thing they'll revisit in 30 years and, and change. I really hope they do. I, look, I'm happy to make a fan edit. And the only thing I want to edit is that title card. Just give it a little bit of gloss. What are you? What, what's your What's your best and best and worst about the movie? Um, yeah, overall loved it. Uh, you know, best part was, I mean, just the third actor. K2SO, we didn't talk about him. Total standout. Loved it. I think they nailed, of course. It. nailed yeah. it with the, Absolutely the droids. It. So that's two droids. They've done big call to try and top you know, or equal BB-8 and C-3PO and R2-D2. But just quickly, yeah, he was a standout for me. Really liked um, Cassian's character as well. And the whole third act, Invader, just coming in, kicking ass at the end. Total win. The downsides, really, yeah, lack of crawl. I mean, not that big of a deal. And no. and the soundtrack was just a bit off for me. But okay. yeah, overall, Some loved it. Things. Yeah, yeah, great. What about you, Ben? I think, I think that... As, as morbid as this sounds, I think the death scenes, like the heroic death scenes in this movie are some of the best I've seen. Like yeah. I was, they, crop, they crept up on me, like yeah. how much you've come to care for the characters and they all get, they all get an awesome death scene. Yeah. So I think apart from just the awesome, just the action in that third act, especially. And then probably the thing that I, I think the layer thing for me, just, it leaves it on a bit of a note. Like it left me feeling a bit like, uh, that was one step too far. Yep. Um, and yeah, just just I think some of the music cues, just a bit, some 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 tunes there that we actually linger with you after you've left the cinema would have cool. been, would have been good too. Because I'm such a Gacino fan, and it's just just a little. I've bit been saying his name wrong my whole life. I thought it was Gian Chino. I thought it was well, Gian It's wrong until someone says I'm right. wrong. Until he calls us up and tells us this is how he's saying that's what we're doing. All right, yeah, let's score says he scores says he thing. You know, not it's really. Definitely score says he right. <laughs> That's not free. It's Lucas though, right? We're getting that right. That's all that matters. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for checking us out. If you want to see any more of So Is It Any Good, you can hit the subscribe button. You can comment below. And we've heard from YouTube. If you like the video, it helps us out and maybe gives us a little bit of money. But we don't care. Do what you like. Um, and until next time, may the force be with you.